one should die because someone called 911. Our first responder system is broken. And it's broken because it has been eight, since 1800, in the late 1800s, we built a first responder system to protect people who were in need of help. Unfortunately, today, our first responder system needs reform. And it needs reform because we continue to send the wrong people on these calls. Let me explain. What would it look like if we led with our values, which is when someone calls 911, our goal should be to do no harm. Our goal should be to provide for the needs of the individual who 911 has been called for. Today, if you call 911, you may get police, fire, and an ambulance. The ambulance is the only one with a financial incentive to show up. And quite frankly, if you don't want to be transported, they leave. Unfortunately, a lot of our calls absolutely don't need police, they don't need weapons, and they don't need fire. Quite frankly, 80% of the calls that fire responds to today have nothing to do with fires. What they have to do with is medical need, medical help. Can you envision with me what it would look like if instead of sending people with weapons and demands, we sent people who had a hot cup of soup, who sat next to you and talked to you. What would it look like if our responders were people from the community? People like peer support, who but for grace, they know what that individual is going through. We're in a crisis in this community in every community across the country. And the crisis is that we just keep doing what we've always done and somehow we expect different results. The crisis is that what we need when people call 911 is to send the right responder. Imagine this. Imagine sending an EMT in a community peer supporter, or maybe it's a social worker, or maybe it's a triage nurse. But what it is, is a team of people who you're sending to help in the situation. Our outcomes would be much different if our approach was what is needed. What's interesting in my current position is what I find is we develop a lot of programs but we forget the first step. The first step is talking to the people most impacted. So I did a couple of focus groups with people who are houseless. I, we did a survey, a community survey, where we went out and talked to hundreds of people who are living on the street. And you might be surprised what we learned. Do you know what people need who are living on the street? What they need is a house. They said, we need water, food, we need some place for our stuff. They need the same thing that we house people need. They need a house. And yet, we have people today who call 911 because they have unwanted people in their neighborhood. Because somebody is dirty or they're talking to themselves. And people call 911 and say, send the police. And you have to ask, what will the police do? The police don't have housing in their back pocket. The police don't have mental health services in their back pocket. The police don't have drug and alcohol treatment that they can just put people into. The police can only use the tools that they have, and their tools are arrest. In the city of Portland last year, 54% of people arrested, but for being houseless, would have never been arrested. 
think about that. Think about the wasted resources that we have. But my big idea is that we totally change that. We totally redesign this system in Portland and all across the country. In Portland, we're working on what's called the Portland Street Response. Because what we believe is that if you don't need to intervene in a, uh, in a crime, if you, if you don't have a fire, if it's not a medical issue, then lessen compassionate people who can help people where they are. There's a big reason that people are on the street, and they're on the street because they have nowhere else to go. And even the current uh, Supreme Court has ruled that if there's nowhere for people to go, then we should not just be rousing them and moving them. I'm excited because what I know is I live in a community of compassionate people, and I know when you change the dialogue from these people are unwanted to these are our brothers and sisters, these are our neighbors, these are people who but for this incident, this hard time, but for losing a job, a sick kid, a sick parent, but for that, they would not be living on the street. You can help me with this. You must help me with this, because it's not a one-person job. And what you can help me do is spread the word that what we need is compassion. What we need is housing. What we need is a different approach to make sure that we are, in fact, taking care of our community. That's what we need. And you can help with that because what I have learned from talking to people in every corner of Portland is that we care. And we know what we're doing today doesn't work, but we also are hopeful of doing something different that gives us different results. I am thrilled that I am in a place today where I can have these conversations and move the systems so that the systems will work for the people like they should. This is hard. It's hard because there are a lot of people that are struggling on our street, but it's also rewarding because what we know is that no one should die. No one should be injured when they make a call for help. What we know is we can and must do so much better. Each of us have a role, and my role on the city council, I can actually lead the policy changes, but it's gonna take each of you to do your part, to make sure that we in fact are a city where we take care of our people, because we believe everybody deserves to live with respect and honor, and we believe that killing people because they don't do what you tell them is not the right thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Couple questions. Okay. When you think about the hardest barriers to try to transform the 911 system and the yeah. first responder system, you want to take politics first or policy first? What's the hardest barrier within the political realm, within the policy realm? Pick one first. I would say that politics is the hardest part. And what, what's the hardest part of the politics? What's the biggest political barrier? The biggest political barrier is getting everybody on the same page, getting everybody to believe that what we're doing doesn't work, and we're there. We've got that. We've got that piece. And so then when you move from that, from that shared understanding that something needs to change, what's the hardest part in figuring out what the future looks like? Is that, you, is that somebody already piloted it pretty well and we can just copy what they're doing? Or you need to kind of start from almost scratch to redo something? There are some pilots. There's one in Eugene called Cahoots. Uh, but what we're doing is really starting from scratch because we're not recreating something that already exists because quite frankly, Eugene and Portland are different cities, right? different demographics, et cetera. Uh, so what we're doing is from scratch. 
But what we've done already is had a little pilot project called Chats, which has actually shown us that we can reduce the number of calls to 911 if, in fact, we go and find out what the real issue is. Some people call 911 because they're lonely. They don't have a community center that they're connected to, right? And so for me, it's important that we actually uh, don't cut any, uh, 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 do any shortcuts, right? Because the needs are broad and the city won't do it all. The county is our partner, right? We have to open a mental health clinic downtown. We have to open the one in East Portland, right? So we need services that we don't have. Uh, the other things that we have to do is make sure that we are working in cooperation with all the social service organizations, right? Uh, because everybody has a piece, right? Um, and I'm just thrilled because we've had this work group with like 40 people for six months. And so everybody gets it, right? Now people have different ideas about how we should implement it, which is why we do a pilot. We're gonna do a pilot study next year. Uh, and we're gonna learn from that with PSU evaluating it every step of the way. And when that's done, we're gonna know how to fundamentally change the entire system. The first thing we will do though is retrain all the 911 operators so that there's a much more directive about who they send. Who's your least favorite colleague on the city council? <laughs> oh, no. Thank you very much. I love them all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>